Ah, Rooster Teeth, who art on the internet, hallowed be thy website. The tubes be drained, thy will remains, on the webs as well as IRL. Give us this day our daily bandwidth, and forgive us our trollings, as we forgive those who troll against us. And lead us not to fail, but deliver us from time warps. Amen. Hey, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> Sacrilicious. You know, I uh, I wasn't a religious man until about uh, 45 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if I was going to use that theme or not until we got to the uh, forgive us our trolling since we forgive those who troll against us. Yeah, that was pretty funny. <laughs> That's pretty good. That's close. Clever, clever young man. Who was that? Um, he, That was X-Man. <laughs> A-X-E-M-A-N. Hey, you know what, Gus? What's up? I was reading yesterday uh, about the Adam Carolla podcast. I guess he does a podcast. Yeah, pretty popular. Like the most popular podcast. Uh, and I don't know he about makes that. money at it. What? How, yeah, how, how do apparently you make... he makes tons of money. So I've, I've always wondered, how do you make money in a podcast? Is it product placement? Like, Or does he like read ads in the middle of the yeah, podcast? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I've never listened to it, but I guess there's ads and stuff. And it's like, they get great ad buys. Wow. So... Man, I don't know about you, but I'm going to enjoy this delicious Coca-Cola while we're doing our podcast today. <laughs> so, And my Maybach's parked outside. So, so, so he, he makes money. So we sh- I guess I, what you're getting at is... We're I doing need, something wrong. I need to listen to his podcast to figure out how he's making money and then yeah. do the same thing? I, if I could uh, give you a little homework <laughs> <laughs> between now and the next podcast, if you can l- listen to his podcast, figure out how he's making tons of money, and then replicate that huh. for the next podcast. We should, we, we should get in on that. Yeah, we should do it. More than anything, I want free video games and a Maserati. Still not happening. I'm sorry, uh, Maybach. <laughs> My buck. Oh man, I fucked. You up. know what? If oh, anybody yeah. wants to send a Maserati, we'll we'll take it begrudgingly. Sponsors are going to kill me now. <laughs> <laughs> How you guys doing? You guys, you ready? You all are gearing up. You're about to take off for E3. I'm pretty excited. Yeah, dude, it's gonna be fun. Pretty excited. <laughs> <laughs> well, great. Well, I'm glad we covered that. <laughs> all right. <laughs> now we we leave on Sunday midday, I think, or early. When do we figure that out? I don't know. Uh, we leave at noon on Sunday. Yes. We get there just in time to go to the Microsoft Natal yeah. Cirque du Soleil experience. The Cirque du Soleil event. You, you guys are going to get to play Fable Three at E3, aren't you? We are. Uh, I think. I don't know about that. Is oh, really? That, I don't know. Maybe. Supposedly. I don't hmm. know. Well, it's Microsoft, so you got to figure it'll probably be there. I right? thought I read it was you, there. You saw Fable Three at X10. I did. Well, actually, no, I didn't. It was there, though. It, it was, was in the there. basement, it was and the Jack basement. wasn't cool enough to get in there. Ah, no. uh, okay. Well, we're going to play a lot of stuff at E3. Yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> I'm excited. We just uh, we locked down Rock Band 3, which I'm, I'm pretty psyched about. So, are they going to have... Like, I know they're adding a new instrument. Are they adding a keyboard or a guitar? No one's... No, like, no one's sure yet, as far as I know, but they have, like, the circles where it's, like, the right. microphone, you know, guitar, bass, and then they added, like, a keyboard-looking thing, and no one knows if it's a guitar or if it's an actual Have keyboard. you guys, uh... Have you guys seen the Mega64 video covering that? No. Yeah. Like, they have, like, an investigative, like... Kind of like, uh... Kind of like the Alan Wake spoot videos, like the TV shows inside Alan Wake Us. Uh-huh. Where it's like mysteries of the unknown kind of thing, where I they like go those. and spoof and uh, try to find out what it is. Oh, that was pretty clever. I watched it this morning. It sounds funny. Yeah, it's funny. I've been I've been watching a lot of Mega sixty four videos lately, dude. Those kids are addicting. Like yeah. we were talking about it after you know, we saw them at Pax East, and it's always fun to hang out with those guys. And uh, after I got home one night, I was sitting at home. Griffin was off doing something important, and. Uh, I just like just randomly loaded up their website, and it. W- I spent over an hour watching videos on their website. Didn't even realize it. The time just flew. Mm-hmm. Those kids are really funny. They are. Yeah, I rewatched. Or I actually I linked my uh, my interview I did with them at PAX East, talking about the music in it, and I rewatched that video probably about three more times. Dude, those guys are so much funnier than you. <laughs> yeah, it's good stuff. I just try to keep up, man. Just try to keep up. <laughs> well, I guess we'll probably hopefully we'll see them again at um, PAX Prime in Seattle. Yeah, so. absolutely. But yeah, so uh, Gus, uh, you are not going to E3 with Jack and I. No. And I'm, I'm sad about that, actually, because you and I, we've been to E3 five times together. Is, have we been that many? Yeah, really? it's the first time I've never been to E3 without you. Wow, that's crazy. It makes me sad. The first E3 we went to together, we shared a bed and cuddled. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> he's not kidding. I woke, up in, I woke up in the middle of the fucking night. Because I felt something hairy on me. I roll. I look over, and Gus was spooning me. <laughs> In his sleep, he'd rolled over and started spooning me. Wow. Yeah. Were you single at the time, Gus? Uh, no, no, I was not. Wow. But uh, we... Uh, does, Jeff we resi- does Jeff resemble whoever you were dating at the time? <laughs> the, the, the tattoos, you know. It's okay. the same. Um, it's funny. Like I can't imagine sharing a bed with you anymore. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, like, we, I, like the way we traveled has changed so much. Dramatically. Yeah. So long ago. 
another thing about that first E3, it's kind of a, a, a funny little piece of history for Red vs. Blue. Bungie showed off Halo at that first E3 that we went to. Yeah. Uh, when nobody knew really what the hell it was. And they had a camera set up that took snapshots of people playing it. I've heard this story. And there's a photo of Bernie, Gus, and I playing Halo for the very first time. Yep. Driving Warthogs. Oh, that's going to be a fun link dump. Good luck. And, uh, yeah, God, how are we going to find that? I don't know. It was on Bungie's website. They had a, like a. It wasn't just us. It was like a, a billion photos. We yeah. just happened to be in one of them. That's great. That's kind of funny. Yeah, I remember. Um, I walked up to the booth, and I believe it was Matt Soul, who's no longer at Bungie, who uh, was manning the booth. I walked up to and was like, "All right, you know, here's the controls. Here's the controller. You know, go." And he was like standing next to me, telling me how to play the game. And when the first time I, when I was younger, when I was like sixteen or so. The ver- one of the first emails I ever sent, and definitely the first email I ever sent to a video game company, was to Bungie, and it was that guy. It was Matt Soul who had responded to my email when I was 16. Oh, really? Yeah. That must have been a major moment for and you. And then, like, I walked up, and, I was like, and in my mind, I was, like, totally, like, freaking out. Like, oh, my God. It's, like, <laughs> one of the first people I ever talked to on email that I really looked up to. What, uh, what was the email about? Uh, I had a question about what I thought might have been a bug in Marathon 2. Was it a bug? Uh, yeah, it was. I guess it was like a known issue. Oh, really? Yeah, it had, to, it had to do with the. Uh, I don't remember the specifics, but I remember there was something wrong with the the camera. Like it had like a theater mode, and like the toggling between the different views, like the, the default button didn't work properly. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That happened to me kind of once. Where uh, actually at X10, when I was out there, I saw Dan Shu from EGM, and I was like, <laughs> I, I read EGM so much as a kid, I was like, oh crap, that's Dan Shu. So I was like, hey man, I'm. St- Huge fan, you know, nice to meet you. I was like, I was trying to be as cool as I could. But yeah. like, Dude, that's so awesome. The, the, I, I saw Jeff freak out a few years ago at Comic-Con. Because he saw, he saw, it was Andre 3000 walking the down the street. <laughs> only time you've ever seen me freak out for, for seeing a celebrity. And Jeff totally freaked out. He's like, oh my god, that's Andre 3000. <laughs> look! And it was like, I see him, I see him. He's like, no, 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 look, it's Andre 3000 right there. It's like, I see him, Jeff. And he was like, I, I want to go up and talk to him. Dude, I, listen, I pride myself on maintaining my cool around celebrities, and I've had an opportunity to not be a jackass quite a few times in my life for various things. And uh, actually... The, I, one reason is the first time I ever met a celebrity. I was 17. I skipped high school because Charles Barkley was in town to oh, play nice. a preseason game. Uh, it was the 76ers versus the Magic. The, it was 1992. It was the year before Shaq played for the Magic, and I was pissed because I, I was just missing Shaq. Because uh, he, was, he, was, he had committed, but he wasn't on the team. Uh, okay. And uh, so I, uh, Charles Barkley was like my hero as a kid, and he was from Alabama too, and I was really excited. So I skipped, high, I skipped school. Uh, to go see him at this like sports store, and I had his rookie card, his '87 like Fleer rookie card, yeah. and this other card. And I went to him, and I was like, "Good luck in the game tonight. I'm really excited. Uh, it's a great honor to meet you." Blah blah blah. I, was, I stood in line for like a half an hour to get, and he signs my rookie. My, he signs the baseball cards. He never looks at me. First of all, he just like sticks his hand out like this. He's sitting in a chair, like horrible posture. I hand him the cards. He signs them, hands them back to me, and I go and I'm talking to him the whole time. And then I go, "Good luck on the game tonight. I'm going to be there. I can't wait to watch you play." And he goes, "Huh." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I am never going to be excited to meet a celebrity again as long as I live because oh, of that man, cocksucker. Uh, I was so crestfallen. Like, I got in trouble because I skipped school. You know, I faced grounding. I almost didn't get to go, get to go to the game that night. It was a whole thing. And uh, he could not have been less enthused to meet me. And I understand that the guy had to meet a lot of people that day. But maybe even like an eye contact or a thanks. Just a. It wasn't even a. It was like a grunt. It was like, Ugh. man, that's gonna that's gonna encourage me to try to do a better job at. At events. Now yeah, like at yeah. Event. It, was, it was heartbreaking for me as a 17-year-old kid. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah, and so I was like, I'm never again going to get freaked out if I see a celebrity, ever, yeah. under any for any circumstance. And I made my maintained my cool until we saw Andre <laughs> yeah. 3000. I know we have some long days, you know, in the booth like that, but I hope I never come across like that. I know, I, me I always too. try to at least smile and, you know, look at people and... Well, you and I, always, and stuff. you and I, you and I always try to like when we can to give a little bit, you know, yeah. do a little routine for the people and stuff. Yeah. But it it does get exhausting meeting people all day long, and I'm sure on Charles Barkley's level, it's a whole other world. <laughs> I mean, but it's he, incomparable. But he was there just to sign autographs. Like at least when you guys are in the booth, you're working, you're grabbing shirts, and, and doing, you know, you're doing stuff. He like, was only there for an hour. Yeah, he was well, there from 11 a.m. to noon, and uh, yeah, no, it sucked. But to my credit, I didn't go up and make an ass of myself in front of Andre 2000. No, you didn't. I just stood there and stared at him across the street. We, we almost had to physically restrain you. <laughs> so I love <laughs> Outcast so much, and I love Andre 2000. The dude's a genius. Was it, that was at E3? Yeah, that was, that was at, at Comic-Con. 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 It was, it was when like... he had that show, that show on Cartoon Network. or Yeah, Cartoon Network. The kids' show about the... 
I don't know. I used to watch it. I don't it. remember it. Okay. It was a kid show about some kids that went to uh, like a music school in Atlanta, and they had adventures. It was like two well, or three years ago. Yeah, it was a while ago. Now, I saw uh, Steven Spielberg at E3 2006, and that was, like I think, the only time I was like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, it's Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and like literally, like he had an entourage of about 50 people sort of surrounding him, and he was rounding a corner, and I had to like cut him off to get in front of him to like snap a photo real quick. Was like, oh, I think that, that might be the same year where Steven Spielberg sat next to us at the... I think we've told the story on the podcast. Probably. We literally sat... We, we saw the PS3 presentation. Oh, yeah? Like that intro seven-minute reel they did. Yeah, yeah. And he, he literally sat down next to like, us. Like, you know how you had, you, you probably saw it, too, if you were at E3. Like, you had to wait in line, and they, like, let you in with the theater oh, yeah, and, like, yeah, do yeah. the little demo and stuff. Like, we waited in line for, you know, 15 minutes or whatever, got in, sat down... The lights dimmed, and as soon as the lights dimmed, the doors opened again, and Steven Spielberg just, like, rushed in and, like, sat right next to us. <laughs> it was us and his kid, one of his kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I had a Rooster Teeth polo on, and I was like, what are the chances that this kid is into <laughs> video games and knows who we are? So I, like, kept trying to, like, lean <laughs> my, my Rooster Teeth logo kind of towards the kid the whole time. Nice. Of course, he was watching the PS3 video and never noticed. Yeah, it was, like, but... 2005, maybe? Yeah, I don't maybe remember. It was, it was a while ago. That's funny. That wasn't the Spore demo, was it, with Robin Williams? No, 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 no. 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 When was it? Did you guys see that? No. no, no, you know what I'm talking about, though. No. So when they were they were introducing Spore, they had the character creator set up. They brought in Robin Williams to like host sessions where he would like create characters and just like riff the whole time. Like some of the videos that came out were pretty funny. Hmm. You know what wasn't funny? Jamie Kennedy. Oh, uh, God. oh Jamie God. Kennedy E3 video we saw the other <laughs> that, day. No, that was funny for a whole different reason. Hey, can I tell you somebody else's story? Yeah, yeah, sure. I don't know if you, I've you ever... want to claim it as your own. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, okay, I don't. I don't know if we've talked about this. Did I ever tell on the podcast Andrew Panton's Steven Spielberg story? I, I've heard the story. I don't know. I don't if think I've mentioned it. On the I, don't, I don't know if I've heard the story. This is his story, and it's brilliant. Uh, Steven Spielberg, first of all, is uh, is pretty famous for being very approachable and nice and likable. Yeah, that's kind of what. Like, if you ever hear stories about Steven Spielberg, it's just about how how nice of the guy is and how you can approach him at dinner at a restaurant and he'll still stop and take the time to shake your hand and say thanks or whatever. I mean, he's supposed to be just a genuinely nice guy. And Andrew, who, uh, you know, is like the world's best griffball player and uh, probably the, the world's, world's best, best left for dead player. Yeah, for pretty sure. Much. And, you know, we, we deal with an Achievement Hunter a lot and stuff. Uh, great kid. He lives in Vancouver where they do a lot of filming. And I guess Steven Spielberg was up there filming one day and he was in a hotel because he had some family from out of town staying. And it was this tall hotel. And he gets into the elevator on the first floor uh, and he... Uh, he, like, had to go downstairs and get his bag or something and, that he left in the lobby. So he goes down and gets it, and he gets back in the elevator, and he looks over, and he's standing next to this guy, and this guy is standing next to Steven Spielberg, <laughs> and they're all in the elevator together. And I guess the guy who looks over realizes it's Steven Spielberg and is like, oh, my God, you're Steven Spielberg. And Steven Spielberg is like, yes, I'm Steven Spielberg. And he's like, starts to try to make a conversation with, the, with Steven Spielberg, and Steven Spielberg is not having it. I guess he had a really bad day or something. Yeah. Who, who knows? It was an off day for Steven. And Steven Spielberg like, rolls his eyes and is like, yeah, whatever. And the guy gets off on the third floor, and as he's getting out, he like stumbles and drops his bag because he's so nervous because he just saw Steven Spielberg, and you know, so the doors can't shut. And Steven Spielberg is like, come on, buddy, really? <laughs> Are you going to take all day? And uh, the guy's like, oh, I'm sorry. And he gets out of the elevator. And Steven Spielberg's just like rolling his eyes. I'm like, ugh. And Andrew Panton's like, what a fucking jerk. And uh, he's like, whatever. And then Andrew Panton, when his floor comes up, he goes to get off. He's like on the 12th or the 13th floor. I'm sure I'm telling the story wrong. But, uh, and uh, he realizes as he's opening, as he's about to get out of the elevator, he thinks, oh, did I, did I, do I have everything I needed? So he just like looked, opened up his bag real fast to make sure he didn't forget anything in the lobby. And Steven Spielberg goes, are you too? Seriously? Are you going to take all day? And Andrew Penton looks at Steven Spielberg and goes, motherfucker. And he, so he just smacked all the buttons on the elevator. <laughs> so he hit every floor because Steven Spielberg was getting off on like the 24th <laughs> floor. And he was, uh, he was like on the 10th or 11th or 12th floor or something. So there were like 15 floors between them. And so he just smacks all the buttons. So he hits every one. And Steven Spielberg goes, what? And he just ran out the door. <laughs> and the elevator shuts. And poor Steven Spielberg had to go, had to stop at every floor on the oh, way home. Man. That's fucking funny. That's brilliant. I thought this was going to turn into the uh, Saturday Night Live back the future elevator ride you remember that one no michael j fox when he hosted and it was like kevin elam kept singing the back to the future song and someone else got on and he sing the family ties song nope all right you don't remember that no gotta get back in time nope you don't remember that no no, no. Fine. well we were on a roll there for a second so yeah. jack killed it man way to go jack anyway way to, way to hit the brakes <laughs> <laughs> so uh y'all are go y'all are going to see valve oh no valve canceled their, Man, their event, i don't know right? what's happening with valve yeah we were we were locked in to go to that portal 2 event and it's been canceled it's been replaced gonna... with a surprise did you rsvp for the surprise are y'all going to that i don't know exactly what's i didn't going on. i didn't rsvp well they'll you couldn't rsvp for the surprise we could 
schedule an appointment to play Portal 2 at oh, the Valve okay. booth. I didn't do that, did you? Uh, <laughs> we should probably do that. Yeah, we should do that. I'm, I'm a little I'm, overwhelmed, I'm to be honest with you. Like, this is the first year we've gone as, like, quote-unquote press. Usually, when we'd go for Red vs. Blue, we just yeah. go for fun or to meet, you know, like, to go meet people to talk about making Machinima in their game or whatever. And so... It's like there's a schedule that Jack's keeping, and it's it's getting more and more. It's full. daunting to me because I'm very bad at that stuff. Make sure you you know put it all into your iCal and sync it to your phone. That I should, I really should. We were, I was having issues with that. You're gonna have to help me with the iCal stuff. I've got it locally, but for some reason I can't like put it online. Mm. Hmm. 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 Uh. So uh, I read a rumor that some people are suspecting that I guess Valve's surprise is a new version of the Source Engine. I read that too. Yeah, it'd be pretty pretty cool if it was. That being said, there have been rumors that it's every single possible Valve thing it could be. <laughs> That's, <you> true. Know? <laughs> That's so, true. Who knows? I heard it was StarCraft Ghost. Some for some reason. <laughs> so I guess I will find out in like a week. Steam on the iPhone. I'm calling it right now. <laughs> That'd be great. It's a, sec- a second app store. They're on dis- distribution channel. Dude, Netflix for the iPhone. You excited about that? Yeah, I can't wait. I'm pretty excited about it. I don't know that I would use it very often, but maybe I would. But my kid will, like in the car. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like great that it's going to work over uh, 3G. Yeah. Which is incredible. It's fantastic. Oh, also iPhone 4, by the way. Yeah, iPhone 4. They, that came out? They, did they announce that? God, I feel so bad <laughs> for them because of that stupid Gizmodo thing. Because had no one known that was coming, if it had only been pure speculation, that thing w- that would have been a tremendous announcement. Dude, okay, so the Gizmodo... I mean, it still was. So but people were bitching that the Gizmodo guys got banned from Worldwide Developers Conference. How can you bitch about that? I know, I was of reading... Of course you're going to get I was banned. reading some of those comments and they were like, oh, this is, you know... Steve Jobs at his, you know, typical Steve Jobs banning people who are trying to help him. Like, what? What are you yeah, talking what? about? Yeah. Good lord. It's like, I hope those guys are banned from every Apple event forever. Like, I, I feel like CES went too light on them, yeah. you know, when they had that TV Be Gone oh, prank yeah. a few years ago. So you guys going to get one? I am not. Uh, well, I did the thing, like, uh, there's a number you can dial that'll tell you if you're available to get an upgrade, and I'm not available till January, but I don't know if that counts with the six months early thing. I think the six months early thing would work in your favor, yeah. I think so. So if that's the case, it'll be available what, in July, so I might be up for it. I'm definitely, I'm getting two. Well, you're still on the 3G, aren't you? Yeah, I'm still on the 3G, and I've had, we've had both of our phones now for over three, more than three years, or two years, I'm sorry, two years, so we were eligible anyway. And although I got to say my 3G is still working like a hoss, I've never had any problems with it. But uh, that video chat, what, what is it, FaceTime? FaceTime. FaceTime. Doesn't appeal to everybody, I can understand. But with as much as we travel and as much as I like my kid, like that thing is in, w- would be invaluable for M- us. More than anything, I think the feature that I like most is the ability to shoot HD video. Yeah, that's going to be very exciting. Even if, you know, I don't, I don't care so much about, I mean, having iMovie on there and being able to edit on the phone is cool and all, but I'd rather just do it on my computer. I would never do that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think, I, I think for most you know end consumers that's fine, but you know because of the job we have, I have Final Cut on my yeah. computer and on my laptop. So I feel kind of d- I feel kind of dumb because I uh, just bought a flip last week, <laughs> and now I, I'm not going to need one. <laughs> so I wonder if it'll kill flip. Like there was a big article on uh, a tech site I read the other day that was like, "Is the iPhone four the, uh, the flip killer?" Well, I uh, it, so. it might eventually. Uh, I think for now, no. Be- simply because I, I'm a little shocked that the iPhone 4 still will only have at most uh, 32 gigabytes of storage, which seems like a lot, and is you know it's fine. But once you start putting your music, your apps, movies on it, you don't have very much space left over for HD recording. You know, I don't think that'll be a problem for me. I have an 8 gig iPhone, and I'm not close to filling it up. Really? Yeah, I don't put a lot of music on my iPhone. It's not something that I, I ever really need. But see, you put like two phone. or three movies on there, and you know, immediately it's full. Yeah, I don't really have any movies yeah. on my iPhone either. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I like that movies now are coming with a digital version of it, too, you know. So yeah. I've got like Dark Knight, and I think I've got Up, and a few other ones. They should all do that. Yeah. Nor- I mean... Normal. I know you're not supposed to do it, but normally, if I ha- if I own a DVD and I want to take it with me, I'll just rip it in- with handbrake and uh, and put it yeah. on my phone and take it take it on the go. I guess they, they definitely should make that easier. I guess now I have now that we have the iPad, I will, really wouldn't use my iPhone in that capacity anymore anyway. Hmm. So, but yeah, I thought it was it was curious that they uh, kept the kept the the memory the same, still at 32 gigs. Did you see some of the iPad announcements they made? Like, they they sell an iPad every three seconds? Yeah, that's crazy. That's fucking awesome. That's nuts. That's really awesome. What's the, what's weirder about that to me is I feel like they still don't have enough volume to satisfy the demand for it. They, so they apologize me, for that. Yeah, it makes me wonder if they had greater volume, like, how 
how many iPads would they be selling? Dude, I think in another, given another 18 months, there'll be an iPad in almost every house in America. I'm going to tell you a secret. What's that? I bought an iPad. Oh, did you? Like, like, uh, three weeks ago, I bought an iPad. Oh, how do you wow. like it? It might be the greatest thing ever. It's really great, right? <laughs> it might be the greatest thing well, why'd ever. Why'd you keep it secret? Because, uh... I wanted to get. I wanted to really use it for a long time, uh-huh. and you know, like really form a solid opinion about it. That's why, like, when it was first announced, I really didn't say whether I liked it or disliked it because I wanted to get hands on with it. Yeah. Which one did you buy? Just like you, like a six, like sixteen gig Wi Fi. Sixteen gig Wi Fi. Totally fine, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally adequate. What are you using it for? Um, everything. <laughs> I mean, it really there, is. There's some stuff I still prefer my laptop for, but if I'm just like sitting around, you know, reading news. It's fine. I mean, I like the the news apps on it are great. Like the NPR app and the mm-hmm. the New York Times app are great. You know, and free. Uh, the Wall Street Journal app's okay. You have to pay for you know to unlock all the functionality. I did not do that. No, I don't have that one either. Uh, but the Netflix player's great. The uh, ABC player's great. I uh, I find that I prefer browsing the web on my iPad or on, I'm sorry, on Griffin's iPad than I do on a computer now. Mm-hmm. Like it's like it, it's great. I don't know. Like the zoom in capability and all that stuff works so well, and it's so fast, and it looks so clear and crisp. Mm-hmm. It's really fun. Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. You should try reading the book on it. I really like the the book reader. Yeah, I hate reading though. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if I read, I would do something like that. And Plants vs Zombies HD is just a blast. Yeah, have I, have I, I, think, I don't know if I've really bought anything. I've been using just like those apps that I named, and that alone's enough. Between that. Safari, you know, just using the internet. Yeah, there's a comic book reader, like a Marvel comic book reader that I really want to get. Are you excited about PDFs coming to the iPad? Yeah, yeah. Or iBooks I don't, or whatever. I mean, I don't know that's something that I'm going to uh, take much advantage of. Yeah. But it's cool that it'll be there. Gotta make pirates happy. I don't ever check mail on the iPad. It's Griffin's iPad, so it's her mail, mm-hmm. you know. So we don't get a lot of PDFs coming in. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's Yeah, it's a cool device. And uh, I'm curious to see what the next generation of it will look like. No kidding, Or man. what it'll do. I wonder if it'll follow the design aesthetic of the new iPhone. So here's an idea. Like I was thinking about what I do on my laptop versus what I do on my iPad. Is there going to be an iMovie version for the iPad? Like, would you be able to then do like basic video editing on an iPad? Well, since you can't shoot video on an iPad, I would think not. Hmm. Yeah, but how hard is it going to be for them to throw an HD camera in there? They can fit an oh, iPhone. No, they yeah. can fit an iPad. Oh no, easily. absolutely. I'm thinking iPad two will have some sort of camera device on it. Like it'll probably have FaceTime on there too. Yeah, that wouldn't shock me. So that's probably going to be the next. It'll have a front and rear facing camera in the next iPad. Yeah, like when they made the announcement, they they worded it in an interesting way. I think Steve Jobs said, you know, by the end of the year, they expect to have 10 million FaceTime devices. Yeah, uh, yeah, he FaceTime did. FaceTime capable devices in the world uh, instead of saying, you know, iPhones. I wonder if FaceTime will, is going to be able to work with like iChat. Like if I could sit here on my laptop and talk to someone on their phone. Yeah, and that, that's the other thing I wondered. I wondered if that meant, that meant they were going to put cameras in iPads or I wondered if that meant they were going to integrate it, you know, with the webcams that come in, you know, Apple Cinema Displays yeah. and MacBook Pros. Well, cause I, I would assume so. They haven't really like, you know, let out a whole lot of details about FaceTime yet as far as like... Uh, if it runs through like an iChat type thing, or if to, you have to create an account to have it, and mm-hmm. you have to re-add people, or can you link it to someone's phone number, or, or what's going on? So, right. By the way, uh, you and I were talking about Retina display and what that actually means. Mm-hmm. Jack explained it to me the other day. Oh, if, not, you, if you don't already know, did you not hear? What? Is, what All right. So, Retina display—that's the new display in the, the iPhone four. It's three hundred twenty-four DPI, which apparently the human eye at about a foot away can only recognize about 300 dpi so it's actually a little bit it's it's higher resolution than the human eye can process okay so therefore it's you know your retina can only go so high and it's actually above that so it's a retina display so if we if our eye can see that many pixels why is a standard resolution on a monitor 72 dpi i don't know because it's probably cheaper to make Hmm. I i think newer apple monitors are higher resolution than that but i think 72 dpi was a standard for a long time yeah hmm Okay, so, well there you go. So man, that's what Retina means. Speaking of impressive numbers and figures, did you did you read any of that Seinfeld data that came out recently? No, I haven't even heard about it. What, what is okay, it? well I guess this week is the twentieth anniversary of when Seinfeld began, so they've started to release a lot of numbers on how successful it is. And uh, in syndication, Seinfeld has made two point seven billion dollars. Seinfeld Jesus. the show or Jerry Seinfeld the person? Seinfeld the show has generated two point seven billion dollars in pure revenue specifically from syndication. That doesn't include the billions they're making on DVDs or any other kind of merchandising. Just syndication has been almost $3 billion. And 
Seinfeld and Larry David as co-owners get a portion of that that nobody knows, but they estimate that Seinfeld gets about $85 million a year still from Seinfeld. Wow. The show, they broke it down. There were 180 episodes of Seinfeld, so that in syndication, each episode of Seinfeld has made $14 million. <laughs> How fucking crazy is that? You know, I was watching, you know, the, I, I most nights I, I watch the Seinfeld on syndication on mm-hmm. our local Fox affiliate. It comes sure. on like at 11, I think. And the other night, they played the pilot. And it was the first time I'd ever seen the pilot. For it's Seinfeld. terrible. It's really bizarre. The only funny thing about that pilot is the fact that George is George. Like, everybody else's character is, like, uh, like yeah. kind of unformed and kind of weird, and they're feeling it out. But Jason Alexander had it from day yeah. one. Also, Kramer, not called Kramer. Yeah, what was his name? Kessler. Kessler, yeah. And they were, like, were at a different restaurant. The waitress was a character. And it was really bizarre. It was back then, too. It used to be called the Seinfeld Chronicles. Right. I think uh, the first few episodes, maybe the first season was the Seinfeld Chronicles. Also, I guess the first four episodes were summer episodes, and they were facing cancellation every week. Man. And so, like, they were talking about on Howard Stern the other day where, like, their, their publicist would call. It was come on Wednesday nights, and every, like, Tuesday, they would get a call from Seinfeld's publicist that were like, can you please put Jerry on Wednesday morning to promote the show? We're fighting for our lives here. We're going to get canceled. You've got to help us out. Like, it was really touch and go for them for a while. And now he's making $85 million a year. A year. year. For, uh, for a, show that got, a show that ended 12 years ago. For fucking reruns, dude. That's, that's, that's crazy. And you know who's not making $85 million a year? Anybody else on that show. You know they get zero. Like Jason Alexander, Julie Louise Dreyfus, Michael Richards. They get zero money from distri- I, really? from, uh, from syndication. I think... How did that happen? Well, they, That's they, the deal they signed. Yeah, they, that, they were the, the holdup on DVDs for a long time yeah. because they weren't going to get a cut of it Jeez. because of their original deal. So they, they, had to, they had to like rework the deal they were getting. The deal is they get a piece of DVD sales, which I'm sure is nothing to laugh at. I'm sure the DVD sales are, are tremendous, you know? But, yeah, they get zero dollars from that from syndication, which is fucking crazy. That's weird. Yeah. Man. That's the deal they had. I'm what sure, you, do? you know, I'm sure they approached it like any other project, you know, when they started, didn't think, you know, didn't, weren't sure if it was going to go even, you know, 100 episodes or Wait, be so syndicated like, or you anything. You think you get some sort, I mean, like, you think SAG would at least make sure they get some sort of residuals? I, I think they have to get some sort of residual payment every time. I mean, they have to get some sort of base residual payment, but they yeah. get, they don't have any kind of syndication deal where they get a cut of syndication. Man. I'm sure they get their SAG minimum residual or whatever it is. But yeah, they, they get nothing out of syndication, which is crazy. How do they not? How how does their agents not renegotiate that contract after how many years of that show? They run? renegotiated the contract in the last season, and syndication just was not on the table. It was not an option, and so they ended up getting DVD rights in the last season. Good and God. then those were even disputed, like you were saying, which is mm-hmm. why the DVDs took so long to come out because uh, they got this huge, you know, battle over you know their cut of the DVD sales, which they eventually worked out. That's just nuts. Yeah. I wonder if those guys hate Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> I mean, you always see well, they came the back. side members on Curb Your Enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah. I say they all came back together on Curb, right? Yeah, like later. But even in season one, like Julia Louise Dreyfus and, and uh, Jason Alexander were showing up pretty regularly. You never saw Jerry Seinfeld until much later on in the show. But there's got to be bad blood there, right? I don't know. I mean, regardless of that deal, the show still made all those people a household name and still yeah. made those people a lot of money. Yeah, but regardless of how the deal on the back end works, who do you think the most successful non Seinfeld member of the cast is? Probably Julia Lewis Dreyfus, I guess. I guess so because she has that New Adventures of Old Christine. She's had a couple of shows. And- that show got canceled though. Yeah, but uh, but she it had a couple seasons. Yeah, not funny. Yeah, no. <laughs> Jason Alexander does some movies. You know, he's, he's had so. some movie gigs. He? he was a Pretty Woman. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. He was like before Seinfeld. Yeah, he was in Shallow Hal. You see him every once in a while. Oh man, was he in Shallow Hell? Yeah, he was. He was. Uh, he was. Was he a buddy uh, Jack something? Black's best friend? Oh, that's right. He was yeah. like the number two guy. That movie was terrible. Did I see the movie with you? Uh, yeah, we saw it together in the theater. I think. God, that movie sucked. Yeah, it was terrible, terrible film. But no, I see. I feel like I see Jason Alexander pretty regularly. Michael Richards, though. Yeah, he sort of yeah. fell off. He f- faded into obscurity and then came back for one very painful day <laughs> <laughs> and then disappeared again. Well, no, a couple painful days because then he went had to apologize too. So yeah. That was rough. Yeah, I remember that when Seinfeld was on David Letterman, and they like, like they, apologizing. They like video. No, they like video chatted with him, or, or they brought him on, like via like remote or whatever. And he yeah, apologi- oh, God. And then all the audience was laughing, and Jerry got mad, and he's like, "This is not funny. We're not joking around." Yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. that was painful, man. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure 
he regrets ever doing that. Gus, did you see this 12-year-old kid who uh, saved his sister from a moose attack based on his World of Warcraft skills? Is that true? Yeah, that's 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 kind of an old story. I think it's like uh, a, it? a, year, a year. I hadn't heard that. Old. It's yeah. on io9 right now. It's, what did he do? So uh, this kid, it was him and his younger sister, I guess. They uh, were about to get attacked by a moose. And so he used his knowledge of, like, he wanted to save his sister, so he taunted the moose to distract it. So he taunted the moose, so he went aggro on the moose, and the moose started going after him. And then he feigned death. And the moose got bored and walked away. So he, like, distracted the moose and then, like, basically walked off. So he and said, he personally attributed that to, to World of Warcraft. Warcraft. He played a hunter in World of Warcraft, and there's, That's, there's some very similar skills. See? Video games save lives. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's some Norwegian kid, Norwegian boy. There you go. I wonder how much Blizzard t- paid him for, the, for that story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just tell him it was because of World of Warcraft. <laughs> Dude, how old did you say he was? He was 12. Oh, okay. Hans is his name. I, well, of course. He's from <laughs> I think <laughs> from World of Warcraft is rated T for teen. I don't know if that's uh, age appropriate for Hans. Yeah. Uh, is his last name Gruber? <laughs> oh, please, please, please. Uh-huh. No, I don't know. You've got a great Hans Gruber yeah, story. Yeah, uh, I have a friend of mine I went to high school with, and he had a younger brother that was like two or three years younger than us. So. By the way, it's it's we, it's Frank who Frank was, was in Immersion. Yeah, he was one You've of the seen him around. Was, uh, yeah. And uh, after we had graduated high school, like we were hanging out, like it was like summer break from college or something. We were hanging out, and his brother was all excited because he had a some kind of like weird scholarship. This it sounded sketchy. He got a letter in the mail that was like, "You're pre-qualified for some grant or scholarship. You know, you just have to pay us like a uh, a fee to process it, and then you'll get all this money." Obviously, a scam. And his younger brother was kind of dumb and was excited about it. And uh, we were trying to convince him it was it was fake. And then we were looking at the paper. And then Frank said, look, it's signed by Hans Gruber. That was the bad guy in Die Hard. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing about that is his younger brother, who was kind of dumb, is like a fucking scientist now. Yeah, he does in California. Like secret military projects or yeah. something. Sweet. That he can't talk about. You know, it's it's sad that no one really highlights Hans Gruber's humanitarian efforts. <laughs> <laughs> his philanthropic properties. You only get the bad stuff. Man, speaking of, speaking of uh, secret projects, what do, you, what do you think about that Mortal Kombat thing? That trailer that came out yesterday? I don't know if it's secret, but it, <laughs> it was all right. But it's kind of a cool take. Bernie hated it. Yeah, I wasn't as blown away as I think most people I were. Bernie was, hates everything. I thought it was really, really cool. What did you think about it, Joe? Um, I thought that the the fight sequence, which is why I, sh- I wanted to show it to Monty, was tremendous. Yeah. I thought that was really good. Mm. And all that choreography was fantastic. I thought it started off okay. Uh, then the fan service stuff just went over the top and was really blatant mm-hmm. and really annoying. Like... Stuff like when Jax closes his door, his cop door, his name, Jackson, whatever. Jackson is, Briggs. Jackson Briggs is on the door, but the O and the N have fallen off, and it just says Jax, like J-A-C-K, and that's cool. Like, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, like, uh, like little hints that aren't, like, too overt. And then they were, like, then they just started crowbarring stuff in left and right, <laughs> and that got kind of hard to listen to. And the acting wasn't that great, but it was cool to watch. I hope it works out for him. I, it's I, a pitch piece, right? Yeah, it's basically the, apparently Jerry Ryan, who was Sonya Blade in the piece, she uh, she said it was for the director to pitch Warner Brothers on taking Mortal Kombat in a new direction. And mm. so it's more, I mean, it's it's very like reminiscent of like so, Seven, but I, I really like the Oh, we're not going to get to see Christopher Lambert as Raiden anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Lambert. Oh man, what a great dude. <laughs> man, that first Mortal Kombat movie, uh, both Mortal Kombat movies, pretty rough. I don't think what I ever you? saw the second one. I know I saw the first the one. The second one either. was goddamn ridiculous. The C- they had like CGI dragons. Like, it's uh, like, is it not T Hawk? Who was uh, Nightwolf? They, like, teaches Liu Kang how to be, like channel his animality. Oh. And then they ride. Like, <laughs> You're already losing. Uh, it's, right. It's yeah. like it's like a be- like two like a dragon and a beast fight at the end. God, it's so bad, dude. <laughs> Back to more important things, though. What do you? What is your favorite Christopher Lambert movie? <laughs> um, There's only one answer to that, right? Yeah, I guess it's got to be Highlander. I'm gonna go with Greystoke. I don't think I've ever Legend of Tarzan. Heard of that. He was fucking Tarzan, was he? Yeah. Wow, that was a good. Well, movie. Hold on, I gotta look Christopher Lambert. I gotta, I gotta know if he was in anything else that I would know besides Highlander. Can Can you think of any other movies he's been in, Jack? Mortal Kombat. <laughs> oh, besides Mortal Kombat One, he wasn't in Mortal Kombat Two. No. He, uh, Christopher Lambert, Rucker Hauer, and Jan Michael Vincent have, like, the exact same career in my head. I don't know. I get those dudes confused all the time. Yeah, I don't recognize any of these movies. Nope. <laughs> Alright, yep, Highlander. <laughs> Still gonna stick with Greystoke. Did you see the rumor that uh, Kim Kardashian might play Lara Croft in a uh, Tomb Raider reboot? Yeah, that I would be see terrible. That. That would be terrible, but I would watch it. Because I've seen her in a movie before, and that was a great movie. What movie? <laughs> I, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kim that little, Superstar? That, that indie film she did with Ray J? A, little <laughs> indie film. a lot of shaky cam, but uh, she was fantastic in that one. 
And uh, I would definitely see her as. I would. I would. I would. I would, I would pay to see her. Dude, as that chick is so hot. <laughs> you know who she's dating right now? Supposedly, uh, the soccer player Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I guess if you're going to go from like, where do you go from Reggie Bush? I guess you go for the world's yeah, best you, soccer you, you player. You go from like <laughs> the you national know. level of an athlete to like an international. <laughs> Like superstar. Well, yeah. I mean, uh, after this, she might have to move to like aliens. Like she's got. Yeah, there's, no, there's gonna be nobody left. She has to. Uh, she'll have to go with like a fusion of Brad Pitt and or, uh, David Beckham, or me. <laughs> she'll have to date them both at the same time, or just one Gus. Yeah, or one yeah. Gus. There you go. Yeah, I guess she won. She, uh, you know, Reggie Bush won a Super Bowl while dating her. So I mean, maybe Ronaldo's doing I, something smart. I think Ronaldo's got enough accolades already. Yeah, that dude's doing all right. She's like, she's like the anti Jessica Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we should hook her up with Tony Romo. God. Um, so the the World Cup starts on Friday. I'm I, I really excited. You and I might be the only people excited about this in the office. I, I know I'm super excited. I've been so anxious for like the last month. Well, you and I have been World Cup buddies now. This will be our third World Cup we've been through together. I guess so. Third yeah. or fourth. Um, back in the day when we were more fanatical about it, we would get up because uh, it always airs at like retarded times. It's not so bad this time. It's not so bad this time. But you and I would get up. There's a bar called Fido. It's actually a chain, but uh, that's in Austin that would show games at like six in the morning. And you and I would like get up before work or take days off work to go to this bar at 6am. And we would be surrounded by drunken Irish and British hooligans at like, who are like hammered at six 30 in the morning. And it was an amazing and surreal and awesome experience. I could, I could never figure out if they were still drunk from the night before, or if they'd gotten up super early to get drunk. (laughs) It was, it was, it was, it was a a work of art. If they were just born drunk, but it's like (laughs) the experience of sitting in a, like an Irish pub with a bunch of drunken UK dudes at like six in the morning on a Thursday mm-hmm. is just, it's a fantastic, everybody I should go once in their life. The worst. And I think that world cup was the O2 world cup. And that was the worst one because I, that was the one that was hosted in uh, Korea and Japan. Yeah. And the, the time change was so fucked up. You had to get super terrible. early to watch everything. But and you clued me into something really awesome. Cause I don't have cable anymore. So I'm not going to be able to watch a lot of the games. Uh, I can only watch the stuff that ABC is going to air. You clued me into that. If you go to ESPN3.com, they're streaming all almost every World Cup game. Yep. Uh, 54 out of the 64 games will be streamed. Uh, the 10 that will not be streamed are the 10 that are going to be broadcast on ABC. And the first game is Friday. First game is Friday. It's South Africa and Mexico. Right. So you Go Mexico. Yay. Um, I'll root for Mexico. Yeah, I guess not every service provider will allow you to stream off of ESPN3, though. Like, uh, I guess the service provider has to have a deal with the network i don't know how it yeah. works but I, I i think i read that time warner will not allow you to stream uh stuff off of espn3.com but, but our our internet provider here at the office does and my internet provider at home does so and plus i can watch it on my on my iphone oh i got it synced up to watch on my iphone also you can if you have access that allows you to and you're traveling there's it allows you to remote access it somehow and yeah. view it i don't know how that works so i'm not gonna talk about it too much oh man speaking of we don't typically go into sports too much but uh, Jack and I realized that during E3, Tuesday night, kind of in the middle of an event we have. What's the event? Uh, oh, it's the, it's the Halo Reach. Um, damn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But during that event, we're going to have to figure out how to do it. The uh, Lakers-Celtics will be playing Game 6, assuming they, it makes it to Game they 6. They could be playing yeah. Game 6. And so we started looking up tickets on Ticketmaster, or I'm sorry, on StubHub. StubHub. And I think we're going to go see the Lakers-Celtics play while yeah. we're there. I'm excited. That'd be awesome. Yeah, or we'll see some of the game and then leave to go play the video games. The Lakers yeah. won last night. Yeah, so basically we need the Celtics to win tomorrow night. Right. Yeah. If the Celtics win tomorrow night, it'll guarantee game six at least. Right. So so I'm really looking forward to that. I've never been yeah. to an NBA playoff game before. But tonight, Jeff and I, we're going to go uh, see some hockey. I went to the game on Monday, and we're going We're going to the game tonight. I'm going to sit on the glass, watch the Texas Stars and the Hershey Bears. Nice. It's a date. Yeah. I'm are, excited. Are you, are you going to do the old dick in the popcorn? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> According to Jack, uh, the... Uh, the stadium, or whatever the fuck you call it, the Cedar Park Beer. Center. Cedar yeah. Park Center has dollar hot dogs. Dollar hot dogs, two dollar beers. So we might have a little nice. hot dog eating contest. Did you know IKEA has fifty cent hot dogs? Yeah, but I can't eat anything at IKEA. <laughs> yeah. That's rough. You get a bag of meatballs for like a dollar. But uh, well, yeah, it should awesome. be fun. The, the, I, the game on Monday, like, so the Stars are up two games to. Uh, they were up two games. The game on Monday, they came out strong. They were up three to one in the first period. It was just like everything was clicking. And then the Bears put five up unanswered and beat them six to three, and it was it was pretty painful to watch. You know, I haven't I haven't talked about this with you yet, but uh, I just remembered you talking about IKEA. Just reminded me over the weekend, Griffin and I were in IKEA buying stuff for the house, and we were buying some fabric because we we made some curtains for the living room, uh-huh. which are lovely, by the way. And uh, I got into a bit of a fight with a deaf lady. What? Yeah, she was this old woman. She was like, I'm gonna guess like 55. And there's like one 
fabric cutting station where you can like measure oh, your uh-huh. fabric and cut it. I know the station. And uh, yeah, so we would we walk over there. There's nobody there, and we lay our fabric down. And then some lady comes over and starts hand signaling me. And I guess that she had some fabric off to the side that I didn't see. And I was like, oh, okay. I guess you're cutting fabric but you weren't by this st- whatever okay so i picked up my fabric and i stood off to the side for a second and she hemmed and hawed and cut a little bit of fabric and then walked away so i went and i put my stuff back down and we got ready to cut and then she comes back five minutes later with another reel of fabric and starts yelling at us well pantomiming us <laughs> again and uh and i was like what the hell lady okay so i pulled my fabric away and then she gets all flustered and starts like elbowing me and stuff and starts cutting more fabric she did that for fucking 20 minutes and every time she would leave I'd, I'd like come over and I'd start to put my fabric down and she would run back and be like, no, no, no. Like it was really weird. So I had to literally sit there and watch this lady very slowly cut fabric what the fuck? for 20 minutes. And anytime I got close to the station, she was like, she'd turn on me. It was really weird. That's I, so, so she weird. She might be my least favorite person on the planet. And I guess she's probably not listening to this podcast, but, uh, that would be amazing if she was, <laughs> but if she was, I just wanted to know you're a bad person. <laughs> hey, uh, doesn't the 18 movie open this weekend? Does it? <laughs> I know Karate Kid opens this weekend. I don't oh. know about 18. Dude, I hear every, everything I'm reading is that that Karate Kid movie is going to be awesome. It looks good. Like, it looks I, terrible. I think it looks I, terrible, I'm watching too. the trailers, and it looks pretty good, man. I don't, I don't know. Dude, every, every every commercial I see makes me cringe. Like, I can't look at it. You know what's a good fucking movie? Like, honestly, a seriously, a good movie, if you sat down and watched it right now, would be awesome. What's that? Karate Kid. The original. <laughs> it's not that old. Yeah. That came out in the early 80s? Mid-80s? Yeah, mid, like mid 80s. 86, 87. It's Elizabeth Shue, right? She's in yeah, that? Elizabeth yeah. Shue's all up uh, in it. 84. 84. Uh, yeah, A-Team does open this weekend. Nice. So it's the battle of the 80s this weekend at the I box guess office. so. Is Rooster Feast going to any of the draft house? Like, are they going to the draft house? Do you know? uh, I'm not sure. They're going a billion know. places. I'll check. Hey, that's another thing. Uh, that's going on this weekend. Rooster Feast is this weekend, I think, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, you and I will be on a plane Sunday, but I'm going to, I'm going to make a concerted effort to have lunch with those guys on Friday, wherever they happen to be at lunch on Friday. Yeah. And then when they hit up Rio Rita on Saturday, I'm going to go try to have drinks with them. I don't know if yeah. you guys have they, have they put out a schedule yet? No, they, they're no. going to have a schedule soon, I think. Okay. They, I'll, uh, they, they do have the draft house on here though. Okay. That's good. I've made it such a priority that I was actually going to go camping Friday night with, with Griffin and Millie, uh, before I go out of town and we canceled the camping trip just well, so that we could hang out with the rooster. It's also guys. been raining the last few days. Probably don't want to camp in that. I'm sure it'd be fun. This is Texas. Shit dries out fast that's yeah. true um yeah if uh, um, you know rooster feast if you're listening you should put out a schedule so. I, I think they they said they're going to they're just waiting till the last minute for some reason okay hmm. sounds like a very well organized event gotta keep us guessing um <laughs> anyway the reason i brought up the 18 movie to step back a second is did you hear that mr t i guess <laughs> is very upset at the 18 movie i was gonna yeah. bring that up too yeah he does not condone or support this film yeah i guess he was shocked with uh, how graphic it is and the violence and the sex yeah too much sex and violence for Mr. T. Yep. That's a, that's that. I guess he also turned down a cameo in the movie. Well, the man's got morals. Yeah. Well, maybe, I don't know. He probably didn't know what the script was. Maybe, did they show him a script? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how that works. Yeah. So, sorry to hear that. Yeah. Well, I wonder how the movie will be. It doesn't seem good. It looks terrible. I will say that that trailer... I can't believe that they funny. put the tank falling and, the, and shooting out a plane in the trailer because that seems like that's that, probably yeah. the big... The moment of the movie. That's the money shot. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, speaking of trailers, did you see the new Harry Potter trailer? Yeah, for I Deathly did. Hallow, or, uh, yeah, Deathly Hallows, right? I saw it, yes. Part, no. Part one. It was fucking fantastic. Oh, God. Dude, I'm so I excited about bumps. that. Yeah. I, I was unpacking. I'm, I'm moving back to my house right now and I'm unpacking all my boxes and I found all my Harry Potter books and I'm like, I might have to reread the last one again. I've... I'm waiting. I, I I was really tempted to start. I when I when I think about reading Harry Potter books, I think about starting at book four because one through three for me are just they're just kind of kids' books, and I don't know they're not as engrossing. Four is when it gets really good to me. Yeah, but uh, I was I, I've been wanting to reread four through seven for a while, especially seven. But uh, I think I'm I'm trying to wait until Millie's old enough to read them too. Wow, and to get it, you know, because I think it'll be a fun thing to share with her. So I got a couple of years to go, I guess. Yeah. When, when did you start reading? Or how quick did you read Harry Potter? Like after, or like what, what what book did you pick up? I you... started with book four. Griffin was like, when book four came out, we were actually at Comic-Con when book four came out. And the day it came out, Griffin was like, we have to go get this book. <laughs> and so we went and found it the day, I like a B. Dalton on the day it came out. And uh, we read the entire book at Comic-Con. Wow. And then I don't think it's taken me longer than two days to read a single Harry Potter book. Yeah, I, I started reading it right around when book three came out. 
And I was going on a plane. I was living in, in Florida at the time, and uh, I was on a plane trip going from Florida back to Austin. And uh, my friend, she gave me the first book. She's like, "Here, just read it. You know, give it a shot on the plane. You'll like it." And by the time I flew back to Orlando, I was up to book three and read it. <laughs> like oh, yeah. I, I read yeah. books one, two, and three in Austin, or I'd finished three on the way back. Like, and I just got hooked. Man, yeah, it's you know, it's untouchable yeah. as a series. I have a question: Shoot. Who the fuck is B. Dalton? He's a bookseller. Yeah, Barry Dalton? You don't know him? <laughs> I don't know. It seems like a weird name to me, B. Dalton. Who are the Brooks brothers? I don't know. Just, <laughs> who's anybody? It's so weird. I agree. Like, uh, okay, whatever. <laughs> no, no, That's just, a weird aside. I'm, I just, it's just, I don't understand it. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, Who anyway. the fuck's Amazon? <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Amazon Bezos. They uh, So they they introduced the, uh, the Harry Potter trailer at the MTV Movie Awards which had uh, problems on its own. Did you see the uh, the recap of all the F-bombs dropped during the MTV Movie Awards? I appreciated that. God. Like, I, I'm surprised it's not a bigger deal, you know? People complain and bitch about cursing on TV. And Did you watch the MTV Music no. Award, Movie Awards? I don't have cable right now. So. Oh, yeah. I wonder how Aziz Ansari did. I like that guy a lot. Yeah. So. No idea. Apparently. The, the three, neither, none of us have cable in here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> we suck. Well, I'm getting it tomorrow. So. Apparently, uh, from what I read, it was one of the worst uh, ratings-wise. Really? And worst viewership-wise. And apparently, hockey beat it, which is a big deal because... Jesus. Yeah, hockey doesn't do well on television no. in America. And I guess nobody tuned in for it. And they had clips from... Well, uh, none of us did. Yeah. yeah. Tom Cruise uh, was playing that what that character from Tropic, Tropic Thunder. Thunder. I thought that was really bizarre that he would reprise that role so so long after the movie came out for no apparent I think reason. It, it might be to start promoting that Night and Day movie. He's why doesn't he's, he? Why, he could just do a character from Night and Day or yeah, like a but, whole or new another character. But he had a lot of buzz from that character. Yeah, that's like, true. I think that's a character people like, and he's trying to erase the crazy in people's minds. I will yeah. say that I watched that video of him and J Lo doing their deal. And I was pretty impressed. Yeah. Like, Tom Cruise is in good shape and all, but that dude's almost 50. He's yeah. like 47, have 48. You seen, have you seen the night and day trailer? Yeah, I think it looks great. It looks good. It's like, God, Tom Cruise, you are bonkers, but you make good movies. No, dude, that's the thing about Tom Cruise. He's a terrible human being, I think, probably. <laughs> but the guy's a fucking, if you put him, you put dude, a camera in he's front a of him, star. he's awesome. I saw a TV commercial for it last night, and I was like, it, it, I hadn't seen it, you know, I'd seen the trailer before, I hadn't seen this TV commercial, and it had like some new stuff. I was like, Everything in there looks great. I no, want, I want to see this movie. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. dude. Like Cameron Diaz, like like sitting backwards on a motorcycle and firing a. Oh, it looks no, it looks, looks pretty it cool. Looks awesome. It seems it, the the weird thing to me is you know there's another movie out right now that Ashton Kutcher movie. What's it called? The Killers. The Ashton Kutcher, yeah, Catherine Heigl movie that based on the trailer seems like it has a very similar plot line. Yeah. Well, they all seem kind of like Mr. and Ms. Smith too. Right. 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 Yeah. right. But but man, Ashton Kutcher and Catherine Heigl. I can't. <laughs> the only the only worst pairing I can think of was that other Catherine Heigl movie, The Ugly Truth, with Gerard the Butler. Gerard Butler. I know. It's like, man, that like they seem like the two people I would least like to see in a movie, and then put them in a movie together. No, yeah, well, I'm, uh, did, I assume no one here saw that movie. No, no, no. no. no well. Maybe it's a great movie. Maybe we don't know. Maybe we're just judging. So one day it'll show up on Netflix, and we'll watch it, and we'll be like. I have to apologize. <laughs> Start a podcast off. I need to apologize for something I said last year. I, I uh, sincerely doubt that. So, no. should I even try to talk about Glee on the podcast? No. Se- the series or season finale was last night. No. So I'll leave it at that. It was good. A lot of cliffhangers for next season. <laughs> okay, great. All right, and then we're done. <laughs> cliffhangers for next season. <laughs> it's, they, it's, they might sing will, a song. Will it's, Bobby pass his chemistry test? <laughs> It's the it's the end of the school year. Actually, whoever made Glee did the smart thing, and they made all their kids sophomores. So it's like they have that cast for at least three full seasons, or even you know yeah. six seasons if they split it up. But but yeah. So anyway, someone was smart on that, and that show is getting ridiculously big. Okay, people like that show. Okay, here's okay here's something that we can talk about. <laughs> that no, this is you'll appreciate this. So Glee's gotten so big, they do this touring show now, where like the kids from the show perform. They're, I mean, they're all actual performers, and so. In the show, there's a kid who's in a wheelchair. In real life, he's not in a wheelchair. He, he's a walking normal. He's an actor who plays a crippled person. Exactly. A handicapped person. In the touring show, he's in the wheelchair. Of course. He's playing a character. He's playing a character. Why How would is he that be? not offensive? Why would it be offensive? He's, he's, repri- How, he's reprising be, his role. Why would that be any more offensive than him being in a wheelchair on the TV show? Because it's... 
I, I, for some reason, that bugs the There's hell out of me. absolutely no difference for, no between difference. him playing that character on television and him playing that character on the stage. But it, if think, it was a play, if it was the Glee play, if it was like on Broadway, but it's not, would you have not, a problem? They're not playing characters on the stage. They're they're, they're actor or they're performers on the. stage. Are they performing songs from the show? They're performing songs, yes, but they're not being they're not in character when they're performing the songs. They're just sure shouting. they are. How do you know they're not? People, people, I don't know. I haven't been to it. People, let me put it this way: they they sell it as a Glee tour. They don't sell it as the so and so and so and so and so and so tour. I don't so know. So you, people are going to see the characters they know from the show singing the songs. Well, that they know see, from okay, the they're show. They're not going to but, see the actors. But then the, on the show, there is a, a one of the girls is pregnant. She's fake pregnant, and she's uh, during the state show. She's not pregnant. Okay, she should be fake pregnant. She there should be go. fake pregnant. So if, if that standard lives up for that kid, you got to do it for both of them. Well, so. yeah, so the problem is with her, not with the kid yeah. in the wheelchair. Well, it could be either way. No. No. Why because not? he's still playing the character. <laughs> You're going to see the Glee show. You're going to go to the Glee show because you watch the Glee show on television, and you go to see the Glee people sing the Glee songs from the goddamn Glee it's, show. It's like being upset if you went to go see a play about FDR's life, and the actor who was playing him was in a wheelchair. Yeah, he was in a fucking. That's the character. You're you're no. absolutely right, sir. That is a fantastic analogy. <laughs> I did just across the room high five. <laughs> yeah. God damn it! You've never been more wrong. <laughs> I'm sure I have been more wrong about other things, but anyway, that really bugs me because that kid he doesn't. Well, you really bug me now. Oh, whatever. Ugh. All right, I'm done. It's been a while since we've had a good uh, a good disagreement. I cannot understand. I can't sometimes. believe that's I'm the only one who gets bugged by that. I can't believe you're not bugged by the pregnant chick. That's the one that's wrong. She's the one that's half assing it. She needs to put that baby bump on and get out there and waddle around on stage and sing. <laughs> or she really needs to get knocked up. She needs to just commit to the character and get knocked up. Is she there hot? Yeah, she's I'll help hot. her out. Okay. There's a, there's, Give me a bunch of, there's a bunch of hot girls on that show. I think you'd like it. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I do I do love you know, wheelchair singers. I, I was so. I was unsure about the show, but then like the third episode, they have a bikini car wash while these girls are like singing and soaping down trucks, and I was like, okay, yeah, this show's won me over. So, How many more bikini car washes have they had since then? Uh, none, yeah. but they've had a lot of really hot. Girls. So the show peaked, is what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> episode, episode three, three. <laughs> Hulu. Here I come. Oh, isn't Hulu coming? What did, What did you tell me? Uh, there's speculation that Hulu is going to be coming to Xbox Live and the iPad. We talked about oh, yeah, that. We talked about the Xbox Live. Yeah. But now Reuters is reporting it, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Reuters is saying it's coming out on multiple platforms, so with Xbox being one of them. That'd be awesome. That'd be super, super it's awesome. Another you, reason I love my iPad. Do, yeah. you think, do you think they'd announce that and then that's also when they'd announce, like, start charging for Hulu? I'll pay I'll pay for Hulu. I'd be happy to. Yeah, right. I bet they'll they'll charge for that, you know, other platform access, yeah. They but I mean, I'm sure they'll always have a free level. Well, Hulu is on the web. Hulu uses Flash, right? Yeah. yeah. So they're going to have to make a conversion to HTML5 to show up on the iPad, and that's going to cost a lot of money to do, I would imagine. So they're going to have to make, they're going to have to support that some way. Man, you're yeah, thinking th- hard. I'm thinking about it. There's, yeah, it's it might not be that bad. Like. You could, yeah, it, I mean, it's, it would suck. Regardless, they're gonna have to. I mean, somebody or some process is gonna have to re-encode every video on yeah, that site. It, de- it depends how easy it is to gain access to the, you know the files that they encode from. You can set a batch real easy to just like go through a whole you know folder full of files, but then it's a matter of amassing all of those files and finding your originals again. Yep, you got to develop a whole new process. Like you're gonna have to change the entire ingestion process for every video that comes in from mm-hmm. there on out. Yeah, listen, what are you, some kind of video producer? Ingestion process. That's pretty. That's pretty good. That's what it's called. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I, impressed. I work in entertainment. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know if the. I don't know how they'll do it. It's interesting. Yeah. Like, how does YouTube play on the iPhone? Like, how does that work? Because I know they have an HTML5 beta site, but you could watch YouTube on your phone before they had From the HTML5 day one. beta site. Yeah. But it wasn't all the. It wasn't everything on YouTube. Right. Certain things. I think they were they were slowly converting everything to H.264. Mm. And now I think when they upgraded uh, YouTube to go HD, that's when they started bringing H.264 to the main site. Gotcha. So I think it's all based on that now. Okay, that makes sense. Well, maybe Hulu. Will, if, if YouTube could do it with all those. Videos, Hulu should be able to do it. Yeah, absolutely. Think about the number of different sort of formats that YouTube gets in, like people mm-hmm. uploading everything, like M4V, AVI, all that crap. To Hulu's probably got some sort of standard they request, right. so it's got to be a little easier. I, I would imagine. I don't know. I, I I don't work at Hulu. Good call. I wonder how many people do work at Hulu. I don't know. That's an interesting question. I'm always shocked by the number of people that work at companies like Facebook and in MySpace and Hulu. It's always way too many. Yeah, it's like way too many. We, we have how many employees here? 10, 11, something like that? Uh, I don't even know. Too many. And we run it, yeah. I mean, I'm shocked at the number of employees we have at Rooster Teeth. It's too many. Like most of those, you know, web 
companies, they have a lot of salespeople. Yeah. That's, that's what makes up. That's what you don't think about. And I can't imagine how depressing that would be. Oh, hey, before I forget, we uh, – Jack and I, I think we talked about it in the last podcast. We were very excited because some uh, a fan was very nice to send us a, a, like a, essentially a six-pack of Duvel. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Them, okay, yeah. Which was a... very cool. I got a funny story about that. Yeah. But uh, – or actually, it's probably your story you should tell. But uh, – on top of that, this week, earlier this week, we received a care package from a person on the site, or let's say a listener to the podcast, who would like to remain nameless, but who is... He specifically requested... Hands he down. Or, he or she. Hands down, he or she. Well, yeah, let's didn't we determine it. that we have the highest male audience of any other Very website on the it. internet? Yeah, that's not Yeah, ourselves. it's obviously a him. Hands down, a true hero. <laughs> in, the, in, the great, in, in, the, in the most pure sense of the word, he sent us six bottles of scotch... That uh, and he did it the right way too. He ordered them locally in town and had them deliver it. That's great. As a as a like a like a, I guess like a, a welcome gift for the new office when we finally move in in July. And uh, it was nice, nice, nice scotch. It, like he sent an eighteen like an eighteen year old bottle of Laphroaig, which is like my favorite scotch. And I've never even seen eighteen year Laphroaig. I usually drink ten year, and uh, from this or, or it's, it's sometimes fifteen year. And it was like every it was like every bottle we pulled out was better than the last. It's funny because I was at the Colo when the delivery got here, and I guess I got here just a couple minutes afterwards. I was walking up the stairs, and you were like, "There's nothing here." I did. I tried <laughs> to block you. I didn't want you to see it. What's going on? Yeah, and so it, w- it was a, it was a big struggle whether we should open them up and immediately down all that stuff because <laughs> Gus and I could go through six bottles of scotch in a week, easy, easy. But uh, we decided that we're gonna true to his wishes or what we assume his wishes to be. Uh, we're gonna wait till we open up the new office, and then we're gonna build like a beautiful. Scotch bar. Then we're going to yeah. go on a bender to end all benders. <laughs> yeah, and then we're going to make sure we get nothing done for the first month. Then we're going to burn office. down that building. <laughs> anyway, it was it was a heartwarming gift, and we're very touched. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> so much scotch. So, uh, so someone sent us Duvel. Creo sent us Duvel last week. Uh, yeah, that was awesome of him. And it was awesome of him. And uh, we put the Duvel in the fridge because we were going to drink it. Yeah, you got three Duvel and I got three Duvel. I, yeah, we both got three. We got like these gift bag or gift packs that had like a little glass and then an extra one. So we both had three piece. And uh, we put the Duvel in the fridge and to cool. And so because uh, we got it late in the day, we got it, and we're like, we're gonna let's open these up tomorrow. Yeah. Let's let them cool, cool overnight. Yeah. And then in the morning we'll come in and have a little breakfast. In the here. morning we'll come in. It'll be nice. So the next morning I get into work and uh, there's an open bottle of Duvel that's uh, had maybe one or two sips out of it, and it's sitting on a desk out in the front room, not not the back room, not where Jeff and I sit. Warm as hell because it's been yeah. there all night. It's been there all night. Turns out uh, Bernie opened up one of our bottles, took two sips, goes, "I don't like this," and just left it out the rest of the night. So that one, so. He's, he's notorious for that, dude. Yeah. It, it gets worse than that. Then another one of my Duvel just disappeared. I don't know what happened to that one. So out of the three that he, that he was nice enough to send me, I got one. Yeah. I'm sure the one that disappeared got joled. Yeah, it might have. I will say, though, that one Duvel was delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had one yet. I haven't had any any of them yet. So. Yeah. But thankfully, I've left mine out. I have my gift, my gift pack still out. So yeah, I have two be, of them still. You the, should take that home before those disappear. Yeah, yeah. The person that took the two out of my gift pack didn't even throw the gift pack away or any. It's just in the fridge empty <laughs> still. <laughs> Did, nice. you get, did you take the glass out at least? No, the glass is still there, the whole thing. And I'm, I'm so mad about it. All I'm the stuff that doesn't it. get you drunk is still in there. Yeah. Man. So I'll take the glass so, out eventually. But I, I see, the, to answer our earlier question, Hulu has 160 employees. Jeez. In, wow. In four offices. 160 four offices. employees what? in four LA, offices. LA, New York, Beijing, Chicago. What do you need? Why do you need an office in Beijing? Well, I'm for? sure that they have, they have deals outside of the U.S. I mean, I know you can't but, get Hulu yeah. in the U.K., but there's got to be some markets outside the U.S. that you can. And you have to have a local presence. Really? I would think so. I don't know. Well, 160 yeah, employees for uh, an operation the size of Hulu seems like a lot, but compared to like Facebook having 1,000 employees, yeah. it seems a little bit more realistic. I bet Facebook has more than 1,000 I bet they, employees. Yeah, that, was, that, that figure is probably two yeah. years old. They're going to have 200 in Austin. Yeah. You know. what is that? Where, do we figure out where the location is going to be? Is it going to be across from Huts? Are Ye- they building there? I think so. Yeah, they just tore down a building over there. Facebook has over fourteen hundred employees. Oh wow, there you go. That's crazy, guys. You and I were going to we're walking to lunch at Whole Foods one day, and we were looking at this old like gas station or like repair shop. It's a car repair shop. Car repair shop that was still operating, and uh, we were like, this was like maybe two months ago, and I was like, man, this is some prime real estate. Austin has really grown up around the street. I wonder how much longer the dude is going to be able to hold on to the repair shop before he finally, you know, either the lease runs out or he decides to sell or whatever mm-hmm. the situation is. Literally a month later, 
we were walking to lunch at Whole Foods, and that it was gone. It was just a parking lot. Yeah, the entire building was gone. Over, like it felt like overnight. And I guess that's where and Facebook's going to be. That's where it's going to be. be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Speaking of which, maybe we should go get some. Whole, oh no, it's terrible weather. I was going to say we should get some Whole Foods for lunch. Maybe the weather improved. Maybe if it did, no. we should go. Yeah. No. I don't, yeah. I don't think so. It was it was raining when I was walking in. So. By the way, dude, chickens are fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> This is tw- it's tw- it's rained twice now since I've had the chickens and I have a little like hut for them that's weatherproof so that they can get in and stay warm and dry and sure enough this morning Griffin goes outside to look and the chickens are as far away from the from the little hut as they can be in the pouring rain just huddled up freezing to death <laughs> so we have to like physically put them in the dirt, give give them a towel and had to like put them in the in the little weatherproof hut and lock them in it because they're too goddamn dumb to get in on their own that's fucking funny yeah. All right, well, let's get out of here. Let's go get some lunch. Okay. All right. All right, anything else you guys want to talk about? Uh, uh, we had, I guess we had Red vs. Blue episode 9. Yes. Of season 8 just hit this past yeah, Monday. What happened, what, shouldn't that have been a PSA? Uh, well, we wanted to get to the point where we had the reveal at the end of episode 9. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, we kind of want to leave. And then now now we have a PSA coming out this week. Okay. Yeah, yeah I know. Like, I, I was confused by that. Yeah. I've actually... It's weird. I've actually lo- lo- like lost touch with Red vs. Blue a little bit since I've been working here. <laughs> well, you and I are back in the Achievement Hunter cave, too. Yeah, yeah. It's like, what's going on, guys? But, uh, I, I just record the audio. But I don't actually listen to recording when you guys are doing stuff. I'm actually excited about the PSA. It's a... Uh... A PSA well, uh, that speaks uh, to me. Yeah, okay. let's, let's, not, let's not say too much about it. But yeah, so yeah. we have a PSA coming out this Monday, and then episode 10 the Monday after that. And then we got Awu coming from LA. Yeah, we're going to do, uh, we're going to attempt to do a week of videos, uh, multiple videos a day from E3. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We might even try to live blog the Microsoft press event on the front page of Rooster Teeth if we can figure it out. Yeah. That's cool. You yeah. talked to Ben about that. I've been trying yeah. to. He just hasn't been online. Uh, You've but, been, uh, been trying to. Been trying to. Uh, 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 wah, wah, wah. And uh, that's about it. Cool. All, All right. right. Well, I guess we're going to have to have some people sit in for the podcast next week because uh, you two won't be there. Oh, man. That's going to be rough. Yeah, I'm going to miss you. Uh, can do a podcast with Brandon and Joel. Maybe I should put a poll up and let people vote for and who they want to who vote. they want to be on here. It could be, it could be <laughs> Monty, Brandon, and Joel. That's my vote. Awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, that would be fun. That would okay, be the best podcast ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, man, we might have to shoot people to one vote, unfortunately. I'm uh, telling you, dude, I'd be happy to call in. <laughs> I could probably work that out. Well, we're, yeah. we're probably going to be busy, man. Give you updates. Yeah, but you're going to be two hours ahead over there. Well, it's going to be no, oh, no, it'll be yeah, it gets to be early. So we started. It'll be eight a.m. in yeah, LA. Yeah. All right, I'll be trying to sleep. Hey, if anybody, <laughs> if anybody has any recommendations for where Jack and I should eat while we're in LA, please tell us. We have places that we go to every time. You're going to be by the convention center or something. Yeah, we're, yeah, we're going to be by the convention center, yeah, we'll, but we'll have a car. We'll hit In and Out, obviously. Yeah, and maybe we'll go to the Stinking Rose yeah. and some other places. But um, if anybody has any great food places we should check out let us know in the comments cool all right all right well thanks for listening thanks toodles